This podcast of Extraordinary on Purpose is presented to you by Rachel Renata and Rare Gym Productions. For more information, visit rachelrenata.com. Hi, this is producer Jade Harrell, and I am excited to bring yet another program to the Rare Gym lineup. Next up to bat is Rachel Renata, who has an incredible story and really has a wonderful, tremendous way of encouraging and bringing about a smile. But she's taken it to the next level with her very own podcast. Extraordinary on Purpose is the brand new show to the networks of OneRareGym.com. Rachel Renata. Step on up to the plate, my Hello, dear. Hello, Yay. <laughs> How are you? I am doing fantastic. And this is going to be good. I believe so. We've heard about a lot of purpose type, motivation type, inspiration programs, but this is going to be different. Tell us why. This is going to be different because it's it's coming from an ordinary place. It's coming from what started out as an inspirational thought of we often see the big picture, but we rarely see the startup. We rarely see the beginning journey of a person. And I think that I am on an amazing journey. And I want people to know that there's going to be bumps. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be situations. But when you are on your purpose, when you are going after your plan and the things that are designed for you, you have to let nothing and no one stop you. You have to just overcome that. And so I believe that Extraordinary Purpose is going to inspire people to go after that, mm-hmm. go after that extraordinary purpose, no matter how ordinary they are. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of components to this. One, just the purpose in and of itself, finding that purpose, understanding what it is, right. actually working within it. But then extraordinary, taking it beyond the ordinary. So share with me your origins, how you came to be. Um, when you look at ordinary, when I say ordinary, I mean, we're all born into a family. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, we're born into a structured family. Um, I was born into a single with a single mother. I had uh, one brother, one sister. Uh, I am the baby. Um, Mm -hmm. So being the baby, you do you get the extra cushions and the extra fluff. Um, So being the youngest of the family, I was always encouraged to um, just be myself. Uh, When I was 19, my mother passed away. Mm. And being that I never had a relationship with my father, uh, being the circumstances uh, surrounding how him and my mother connected or whatever, um, it was just never a relationship there, no matter how hard we tried. It left me feeling rejected. I felt rejected by my father for years because I am just as much a child as any of the others. So to me, those are all my ordinary uh, circumstances that could lead me to say, you know what? I'm done. Right. Uh, I'm alone. Mm-hmm. I am down. And just or when I'm not anything special. Right. I'm not mm-hmm. anything special. And when you start out, when you have that, and then on top of that, I made a baby. Okay. So now I decide I'm going to be somebody's mother. <laughs> and all this brokenness, I'm going to bring in a mm-hmm. child. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it was actually through that pregnancy, through having my son, that I realized that I had a worth. Um, I do not promote premarital sex. I do not promote single parenting. But if the circumstances happen and you fall into that realm, it does not count you out. For me, it counted me in and it made me realize that, you know what, if I can't do it for me, let me do it for him. Mm -hmm. And so that became my passion to do more for myself, to go to school, to continue my education. Um, After my mother's death, I gave up hope. I I could not understand how this God that she had taught me about and raised me to know loved me so much but would hurt me so bad. Mm. So it was during that, that time and understanding what it was that he wanted me to do that I realized that he did love me and he owed me nothing and that through that pain, instead of being bitter, I was going to be better. Mm, and so, beautiful. yeah, that that's that's how I started. Um, begin to, um, I had a great support system. Uh, my son's father was great. I didn't have the typical baby mama dramas when busting out windows, turning over cars. Everybody <laughs> was just kind of living their life. And we, I ended up, being very moved by the poverty and the the homelessness that I saw in the area driving to work and being that here I am now, I have a son going to a Christian school that I had to pay for. I wasn't on any form of uh, public assistance. Um, That to me was grace Mm -hmm. and that was mercy. And no, I couldn't probably eat, eat out every day and no, my car wasn't a a, a Benz or a BMW, but it was mine Mm -hmm. and I could afford Mm -hmm. it. And I was Mm -hmm. living within my means And I look at these people that are sleeping on the streets and I look at this mom in the doorway holding her baby. Mm. And the thought is, what made them different from me? Right. 
And I couldn't find an answer because our common denominator is we are human. And because we are human, that means we can make some of the same mistakes. We travel the same paths in life. Knowing that, I realized that I had been blessed. And had it not been for that faith in God, had it not been for his grace and mercy, that probably could have been me because I made the same choices. I followed crazy. I followed the cute face. You know, I went to school and dropped out and got back in. You know, I did all those things in in my 20s. And the the question is, he kept me. And so because he kept me and I had a little to share, I had an amazing family and friends. Why not get together and give back? Really? Why not get together and give back? And so from there, I birthed Project Compassion, okay. which became a nonprofit organization. Now we'll celebrate nine years. And awesome. it was through that transformation that we begin to provide outreach, helping the homeless, providing. But I begin to see a different side to it. A lot of stigma is homeless is drunks and alcoholics. Mm-hmm. But it's something about talking to a woman who say her husband died and she didn't know how to pay bills so she lost the home. Mm-hmm. Or meeting a woman who says she met a man and she moved here and after the relationship ended. Or just a doctor who said malpractice suits put him out of practice. Those are the people that said, you know what, life, this can happen to any of us. So the, our slogan became homeless but still human. Mm-hmm. And it makes us realize that yes, they are homeless. And they are on the street, but they are human beings, and we should try to provide. We absolutely should. So there was a moment where you discovered your purpose, and that was giving to and pouring into the lives somebody of else. somebody else. Mm-hmm. But how were you able to transform that purpose to actual movement? You know what? <clears throat> a lot of it was done by just going and getting started, um, tapping into what I'm good at. Okay. And I'm good at bringing people together. Okay. I'm good at saying, hey, let's do this. Mm-hmm. And so knowing that it was taking the, the project and then taking um, my purpose, I felt like I had a purpose in bridging the people I knew who also had a little to mm-hmm. the people that didn't have none. Okay. So what did you guys do? So we started making a 1,000 sack lunches every last Saturday of the month mm-hmm. and taking them out. And we created a route. And we went from stop to bridges to doorways, and we would literally ask them if they needed anything. Right. and Or we would just offer. We got some food. We have um, hygiene kits. We got some socks. Would you like some? Sure. And that became our, our starting point. Um, three months in, just kind of doing it, going out, not making a really big deal out of it. I got the opportunity to be featured on the Tire Bank Show. Oh, really? Yes, got How the opportunity. So? Um, I was trying to do uh, my I was trying to secretly submit my friend to tech next top model <laughs> and um, adult ADD kicked in and I saw uh, <laughs> something started blinking and it said, what would you do if you had $10,000? Mm-hmm. And so I said I would start, you know, my own business. I would uh, continue to feed the homeless. I named all the things I would do. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing I know, I got a call. Let's see, I did that in September of 05. I got a call February, January of 06. And the call said, we want to know more about you and what you're doing. And oh, I told really? them. And they said, well, we're looking for an ordinary person that's doing something extraordinary in their community. How about that? How, How about prophetic? That? And so I said, okay, that's me. And the rest is pretty much history. I was I was chosen to go and I spent about three days out in LA. I so taped. Cool. Tyra came here. The the well, her show came here, and they filmed us doing it. And um, went back out. And to my surprise, um, she gave me ten thousand dollars as startup capital. You actually had a chance. I had to, a chance to do what you thought you might do. Yep. So all the things that you listed when you submitted mm-hmm. your what ifs. Mm-hmm. Were you able to then see those things manifest? Absolutely. And I was not only able to see it manifest, but it told me that the only way I couldn't be or achieve anything that I wanted to be is if I stopped. Mm. Because reaching out to her was the first step. The first. The first step was reaching out. Mm -hmm. Her then saying, yeah, come on, Mm -hmm. was the second step. Mm -hmm. So... Now I have it. I have all my tools. I have all my resources. So now I can go out. And it was it was life changing. It was how? Um, well, just going on Tyra Banks and being featured and getting the, the, the publicity and getting the press. It started letting other people dream a little bit. Yeah. Other people believe that this little girl from Belleville <laughs> has now had this opportunity to go mm-hmm. on a major show right. with a major superstar. Mm-hmm. And look at the outcome. Right. Um, from there, I just hit the ground running. We did. We've been featured in Ebony Magazine. Uh, we were the Pine Sol Powerful Difference Award winner for oh, the my. Midwest region. 
Um, we've been featured in numerous news and radio features. After that, uh, we've done a segment with Michael Bazin show. I mean, just opportunities to say, to hear the story. There's nothing that I did out of the ordinary. Right. But just the ordinary became extraordinary on purpose. On purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about a couple of things. So in an instant, your circumstance changed. Absolutely. You went out to be on a program and you left there with $10,000. Speak a little bit about how being ready or at least being able to allow yourself the yes when it comes. Um, going out there, I was not prepared because there was nothing that told me that they would give me anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the, they're going to give you a year supply of bread ready face. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> when I didn't get the year supply of bread, I had to change my face and right. that was a lot. So I wasn't ready, but I knew that there was no stopping. Mm-hmm. You know, when you get in, you could have stayed home. Absolutely. I had just been offered the job I wanted. I wasn't working. So to be offered a job that you wanted, they want you to start on Monday and Tyra wants you to come on Wednesday. The same week. The same week. (laughs) It's like. So then now that gives us a whole nother layer. I know. But you weren't ready. You went on anyway. I went on anyway. I went on anyway. And going on anyway, again, was that step to making sure um, I fulfill my part of the agreement of saying I wanted more for my life. I wanted to do more with this life. Mm-hmm. And so I went on. I said yes. I worked out all the back ends. They said yes. Um, and so being able to go and then to be able to get that was like, wow, I could you can stand in the way of yourself mm-hmm. uh, being afraid. Yeah. You know, being afraid of going on television, being afraid of, OK, what are they going to say? That's a lot. Being afraid, again, of allowing yourself to say yes, because Mm -hmm. it would have been easy, could have been easy to say, well, I don't have the way to get out there. Oh, I don't have time to get out there. Oh, I got to go start this other job. There were so many no's, outs, Mm -hmm. way outs. Mm -hmm. And you said going on anyway. Yep. I went on anyway. I went on anyway going with the thought that once, first of all, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. How often will Tyra call me for anything? Number two. (laughs) How often will this show, how long will this show even be on the air? Um, One thing that the guy said to me, he said, well, Rachel, it is between you and another young lady. It's not a contest. We just want the best story to kick it off. He said, but if you don't come this time, we'll let you come the next. Mm. And I said, no, I'm going to come this time. Because knowing that these opportunities don't last forever. Mm -hmm. And so being able to just say, you know what, I swallowed my fear. And I, I went because I, I knew that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to say yes to the once in a lifetimes because they don't happen again. And truthfully, none of it does. Right. There is no moment right. exactly like another. Right. This, op- this moment right here and now is It'll this never once in again. a lifetime. Mm-hmm. So tell me about the job that you didn't take. Um, well, I did take it. You still got I to still, take I, the they, job. Actually, I called them, and I, I remember calling and asking for the HR manager. Were you nervous? Absolutely. But you went on and Yeah, out. and I told her, I said, ma'am, this is going to sound really strange, but I have to be on the Tyra Banks show on Wednesday, Okay. and you want me to start Monday. And she goes, well, let me let you speak to your manager. <laughs> and so I got the manager on the phone, and I said, this is going to sound crazy. And she goes, it doesn't sound crazy. She said, you go. Matter of fact, you better go. Mm. She said, we will start your hard. We will push your hard date back one week. You go, you do the Tyra thing, and then you will start the Monday after you get back. So, again, they help me mm-hmm. be able to say yes. But here's the thing. Because you did the first, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. many of the rest, and I guess Oprah would say the universe rose up to, right. uh, to meet you. Absolutely. Uh, she and India, Irie. But in this, I hear all of the fears that we would embrace. <gasps> But what if I don't get this job mm-hmm. and I won't get to do this? Mm-hmm. I mean, you had all those things there mm-hmm. screaming at Absolutely. you. Absolutely. But they did not turn out the way that you expected. False mm-hmm. expectations appearing right. real. Those are very real uh, yes. possible things and yes. possible outcomes. Mm-hmm. How were you able to come to terms to that with that? Um, it was a matter of just jumping, Jade. I just jumped. Sometimes. Are you crazy? Who said that? Yeah. Somebody said, I know you had someone say. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. I was told I would be a fool if I did not take that job and stay home because I didn't know what Tyra would do. But I was willing to be that fool mm-hmm. for the opportunity. So let's look at this then. Here's another layer. Had you not received the grand award, would it have been worth it to go? Absolutely. How? Come? Because that gave I have that was an opportunity 
to first of all be in LA on a major Emmy award talk show. Hey. So that the experience to me was more of an opportunity mm-hmm. than I mean the check was awesome, but that experience. Sometimes we have to be willing to jump for the experience, not the outcome. I just want to experience the opportunity of going and sitting on a couch with one of the largest stars, mm-hmm. business moguls in the world. I so want to do that. What does that mean to you in your life? That means there are no limits to what I can do. Yes. There is no limits to where I can go. Mm-hmm. If I want to do it, if I want to pursue it, the only person that can stop me is me. That's right. Yep. We stop ourselves. Mm-hmm. All we the time. sabotage ourselves. All the time. We hide ourselves. We bury our heads. All the time. Because we're afraid. All the time. You told me as you were beginning this program that you wanted to help us become courageous. That's right. Tell me more about that. I want the ordinary listener, the one with the notebook full of dreams and goals. I want the one who wakes up with that burning desire of wanting to start but not sure how. I want the one who, no matter how much he or she can try to shake it, she comes back full circle to that that thing that you know is inside of you. I want them to know that every ordinary thing, person, and idea has an extraordinary purpose, Mm -hmm. and it can become that if you just start. This is to get you started. Jump, leap, just start. Because if you start, the rest will meet you as you go. But what if I fail is a common question. Oh, that's not a problem. It's going to happen. There's no what if. We all hit parts of our plan and our purpose where I wouldn't call it failing because if we continue on, but you're going to hit a setback. It happens. Nothing is perfect. It's not a purpose, perfect purpose. Mm-hmm. It's an extraordinary purpose. And it's a, to me, that's when the miracle transpires. Mm-hmm. When you hit that setback and then things begin to work, chances are it's, it's like a detour. Mm-hmm. It's a detour. I'm in Missouri. To get to Illinois, I'm going to have to travel. But if the bridge is closed, that don't mean I'm stuck here forever. That means I might have to take a little mm-hmm. extra route around. Those is where, that's where we learn our experience. Mm-hmm. That's where we may get a little bit more knowledge. That's where we probably hadn't gone as deeper into things that we that we needed to go into. So this is now forcing us just a little bit deeper. You stay encouraged. And you have to, when you're on your purpose, you can't just have anybody on it with you. You okay. got to make sure you have people that are encouraging you, mm-hmm. that are keeping you accountable, that are keeping you focused. Iron sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. And so if you're on this purpose and everybody behind you is a hater mm-hmm. or telling you you can't, you're going to have to clear the tracks right? because you got to have people that's going to tell you when you're feeling it and you don't necessarily want to say you're feeling it. It's something about what they say or what they send you that lifts you up and keep you going. Mm-hmm. So don't think that failure is not an option. It is an option. It is. It's a great option. It's, it's a great option. Mm-hmm. Failure is Failure's your opportunity. To, yeah. It's an opportunity to get it right the second time mm-hmm. with a little bit more wisdom. Now, it costs. It does. It does. Talk about some of the price that you had to pay along the way. Um. My biggest, um, well, one of my biggest things is the purpose that I'm on now, Project Compassion has grown. So we're no longer just doing outreach. We work with young girls. We work with uh, middle school girls, 11 to 18, and we work with them in assisting them with um, character and self-esteem development and behavior. Trying to be that role model or inspiring to be that role model, I, I don't get the luxury of going to every club. I don't get the luxury of uh, getting turned up and turned out and turned around. <laughs> you know, you, you have to be accountable so that those that are watching you will be able. So you could say I, I, I paid the price of my freedom. Okay. I gave up. I started Project Compassion at 25. I'm 34 now. What? Yes. Shut your yes. mouth. <laughs> so there's a lot that I don't really don't even desire to do. When you're busy about your purpose, Honey, I'm okay right, with that. Right. Um, so you miss that. Um, I don't get the opportunity to vent the way I want to. I have to hold my peace a mm. lot often. Um, but holding so your then peace. Do you still want to, or do you want something else? I love what you just said about when I'm in my purpose. Mm-hmm. I want totally different things, mm-hmm. and so I would assume that the goal mm-hmm. in. Ex- extraordinary on purpose is one getting the on purpose Mm -hmm. getting on Mm -hmm. the proper purpose Mm -hmm. 
and then the rest can then manifest into extraordinary. Absolutely. So do you want to still vent and go off the way you used to? No, because what what happens is you can kind of, as long as I win the battle, I mean, as long as hmm. I win the war, talk about that. I'll sacrifice the battle. Some things aren't worth the fight. This is just a little battle. This this situation, a rumor that you know is not true. I'm not mm-hmm. going to spend a lot of time chasing that thing. Ah, but you are speaking as a mature, more mature woman. Absolutely. Say we're talking to the middle school girls that can't see beyond that, how badly that hurt and how mm-hmm. in their face and extreme it can seem. When you are in that age group, your mind is totally focused on trying to, I tell those girls to let your actions be the truth. Mm -hmm. So no matter how many girls we chase down and say, that's not true. What you say, what you say, it doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. I said, just show them. Show them that's not you. If you're in a compromising situation with a guy or a girl or a situation, you have to show them. You have to be the one to say, you know what? And there's some rumors you'll never get rid of. True. So, yeah. So So you have to learn how to build that Mm -hmm. acceptance within yourself that I know people are going to talk. Sure. I know people are going to do that. And again, surround yourself. You got a group of friends that may not need to be your friends. If every time you look around, one of them is bringing you drama. Mm -hmm. You need to surround yourself with a group of friends that is going to uplift you and encourage you. And if the rumors happen, they're there to keep you balance Mm -hmm. keep you steady Mm -hmm. so what's more than not only show them but more importantly show yourself show yourself show yourself it starts within you not true because i have to believe that that's right that's awesome it starts within yourself jay nothing we can do can manifest until we first accept it and we first believe it it Mm -hmm. starts with us i can't sell you my dream if i haven't bought it first Mm -hmm. that's just the bottom line if we don't start with self it's not going to happen how about that Got to start with self. Got to start with self. What happened after you left Tyra? I came home. Okay. Um, And you were a superstar. I came home, but you know they have you sign that waiver. Uh Uh-oh. So nobody knew I was a superstar. Some people kind of knew because I was like, well, I think this may happen. But when I had, we had to wait two weeks before the show aired. The show aired. Mm -hmm. Um, It was the longest two weeks of my life. (laughs) I can Um, imagine. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, And I never forget the first call came in at four in the morning from my sister. She teaches here in St. Louis. She was on her way to school and she stopped to get a newspaper and I answered the phone and she was screaming. Oh. And she said, you are on the front page of the paper. You got $10,000. And I was like, oh, Lord. And then hold on. Boop, boop, boop. Text, text. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> Suddenly. It was like, it's happening. Um, it had it was, it was it had a mixed feeling for me. And I'll be honest and I'll be real with you. Please do. Coming home with $10,000. Having that was a big responsibility mm. um, because I didn't have all Should the be a ma- relief, right? No, it was ah. a big responsibility because now your dream is a reality. But where do I start with this? Mm-hmm. You know, and then I still have my real life circumstances and situations that I'm facing. So how and where do I start? Then you have people trying to push you with their motives and their ideas and their causes and people mad at you and people. I mean, it was just so many things going on. Then you had people you didn't even know sending you stuff. And it's like one thing I learned was you don't give all your information up in a press release. And, and, and anything. <laughs> um, I disconnected my home phone. Oh, wow. It was that much. It was that much. I would get random cards from guys, <laughs> letters from I'm like, y'all know what? I didn't say I said so it was it was a lot (laughs) it was a lot I was like okay but um I I was raised in a family that we were taught my mother taught us that nothing happened to us because we are special it happens to us because we are blessed Mm -hmm. so I looked at it as a blessing and I stayed grounded that whole entire time Mm -hmm. with my friends and with my family so that I would stay focused Mm -hmm. but yeah I, I did I started dreaming bigger and I started planning and uh, one of my dreams was to open a boutique. I was able to do so. And um, that was a great opportunity. Um, I had an online store. Yes. Um, I was able to set up as a vendor to some of the greatest events in, in the St. Louis metropolitan so area. Cool. Um, I was able to have a picture of me and Tyra on the table, which was always a conversations piece, if nothing else. Yeah. So these were the things that I've been able to experience. But then as you grow and you develop, you realize that my season here has kind of faded um, mm-hmm. and things have changed. And so I begin to switch gears and I begin to go more into the consulting side of my business with uh, first with image. And then I started to do it more with professional and nonprofit development. Mm-hmm. And so hence that brings us to where we are now with uh, Renata's 
is my uh, was the business that Tyra gave me the startup capital for, and we will celebrate seven years. All right. And then Project Compassion will celebrate nine. That so I tell everybody hilarious. I came. I had babies back to back. You sure <laughs> I did. had my business babies back to back. Um, but again, it's been a journey that I would not trade because I have learned so much about life, mm-hmm. so much about myself. And when you are in business, 10,000 can go very quickly. But when you're in business and you have faith in God, it's like sometimes seeing the Red Sea part over and over again. Right. right. So then it's not so so much of a surprise. Mm-mm. It becomes the standard. That's right. That you expect. That's right. And have the faith that it will show up like that again and Absolutely. again. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I have a run of questions okay. I want to have you expound upon, and then we'll get into this extraordinary show. Okay. So we're extraordinary on purpose. Talk about the wait. The wait is your time to begin to focus on where it is that you're trying to go after your wait is over. Um, the outcome. Um, when we are waiting, we never wait just idly. We wait with planning. We pl- we wait knowing that after this manifests, once I, once I was able to air the show, what do I do with this? Mm-hmm. Do I use it to continue to build my cause? Mm-hmm. Do I use it to continue to push my efforts? Or do I just get to sit back and say, yay, this happened. Your wait is the time to come up with the next step to mm-hmm. the plan. I didn't hear you say worry. No, you do not worry. Um, Worry can become a very, very, very false sense of distraction. Worry will lead you and convince you that you have made all the wrong moves. Uh, Worry is a sign of lack of faith. When you worry, you're saying, I have no faith. And really, you're almost saying, I don't believe. You can, there is no room for worry. There's only room for focus and determination. Because once you start to worry, you lose sight. You lose focus game like game almost over because Mm -hmm. uh, there's different conversations you have from when I worry, I'm I think negatively. But when I am focused, I think more towards the positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the huge difference. Is it a choice? Worry is a choice. Mm -hmm. Worry is a choice because it's a mind thing. Um, We choose to worry. Mm -hmm. We do. So you were able you're saying see beyond the weight. So let's then talk about the suddenly the success. Um, again, the suddenly was something that I think I, pr- I probably was not ready for the suddenly. I was not ready to do live interview on the spot the day it aired. Um, I wasn't prepared for some of the attention that happened. But again, when you are focused, when I continue to focus on it's really not about me. I got more sidetracked when I thought all of it was about me. But truth of the matter is it was about my purpose in Project Compassion and what I was trying to do. So suddenly when the blessing come, it will. I mean, it's an ego boost. It's an encouragement <laughs> force. You get a little sum about yourself. That's the norm. But you have to remember that it's not about me. Mm-hmm. You will never be elevated for your glory. You will never be elevated for your focus. So remembering that kind of humbled me a little bit because I remember saying the prayer Every day after that, after that whole experience of the next morning, actually that whole week, I remember just constantly praying and saying, God, allow this humble spirit to stay within me. Because if I if you take it out, you're going to have to teach me again how to be humble, which means I would have to drop way back down. I, I didn't want that. Right. So I remember just constantly asking him to just allow it to continue to dwell in me mm-hmm. to where I realize it's not about me. And it's not about anything that I have done. It was about understanding that you have created me for more than just living and dying. Let's talk about the after. When the lights go back down and things begin to normalize in the new place. The after is kind of like going into the storm after the storm has passed over. And now you're kind of left with your pieces. And you have your family and you have your friends and then you have all the people that see you as this extraordinary person and being able to say, "Okay, I've now taken on a different role outside of uh, who my family and friends know me to be. Um, The after created a sense of accountability. Now, people are looking for me to do what I said I'm going to do. So it builds your character. After then sets you in a place of saying, I can do this. It sets you in a place of confidence. It also puts you in perspective of saying, you know what? 
the after my family is still my family. Had I took on a different attitude and persona after that with them, things would have been differently. But they remained who they were. My family is my biggest reality check. How about that? I mean, I could do this and just leave a TV show, and my brother's still going to text and call me and say, baby sister, I haven't seen you. I love you. Where are you? And it's like, really? Do you know what I just did today? You know? But to them, I'm still me, and that's encouraging because that means I haven't allowed anything to alter me. They support me and they encourage me. So your after is important to assess how you've dealt during the storm and how you've dealt during the process. When you are done, you got to still have some character and some integrity and some part of yourself that still allow people to understand you are still the you have the same heart because as you grow, you do change. Sure. So for people to say, well, I didn't change. Yeah, I want to change, but I want it to be a growth change, not a ego old a Mm self-change myself. I Mm -hmm. want it to be more of a purpose-driven change. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you had an awesome boutique and then you shifted gears. Talk about the new start, so to speak. It's important to make sure that you recognize your new start is not a sign of failure. When you open a boutique and you operate a boutique and then you suddenly close your boutique or you say, I am closing my boutique, to some on the outside, it's failure. Mm -hmm. If you're not transitioning into something else, then you will be able to understand that, you know what, I am growing. I am, I am, this is evolving. This isn't failure. This is evolving because if you stay longer in a place than you're supposed to be, it will be, it will come across like you're failing. You're setting yourself up for failure. So there you go. Setting yourself the up seasons up. change. Right now we're transitioning into fall. Does it make sense to keep going out buying shorts? They on sale? They are on sale, but <laughs> guess what? But not to buy them. Right, not to else. buy. You know what I'm saying? But if you are getting ready to transition into a fall season, you need to start preparing yourself for fall weather. Awesome. So then let's talk about the change. You said here we are today after all that has changed and what you have emerged into through those seasons. Talk about the change. <laughs> we inquire a lot of experience, self-awareness, and we have to begin to use all that we take from one season into another and use it. Mm-hmm. Nothing lacks. Our disappointments, our sadness, our heartbreaks are to take into our new season, sometime for ourselves and sometime for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Some things that we are going through and we experience, we're able to be that orange sign that say you really want to go this way because <laughs> down here is a drop off. So you have to be able to know that this is going to be used for somebody else or this is going to be used to help me. So when that conversation replays itself or when that action shows itself again, you'll be able to say, this is how I can do this or I'm going to respond differently this time to this. That is phenomenal. And so here we are with Extraordinary On Purpose, a brand new podcast. What can we expect? Oh, my goodness. We can expect a lot of inspiration, encouragement, laughter. (laughs) Um, Because you are funny. Thank (laughs) you. You are. A lot of insight, (laughs) perhaps a few moments that make us all go, wow, Mm -hmm. wow. I look to have people say, you know what? I decided to do it. I did it. Mm -hmm. I finished it. Mm -hmm. I started it. They found the courage that they needed because of something they heard and they felt through Extraordinary on Purpose. I want them to be inspired to make that change. Stop looking at the ordinary situations of life, everyday life, and look at where you're trying to go. Every idea, every thought can turn into something extraordinary. But you have to start. I'm going to have guests, extraordinary guests, guests who did that step. They have been inspired. They have decided to just leap from leaving jobs to just starting with a basic startup capital to just taking their idea to someone and saying, being able to believe in their idea so much that they were able to sell it to somebody else to believe in it. Or just someone that, or individuals that says, you know what, I was on this path and now I've been shifted into this path and look, this is what I'm doing. You will be inspired. You will be encouraged. You will make a step towards something. When you listen, when you tune in, you're going to say, you know what? It's time. This is your time because you're listening and you are taking it in. This is the message. This is the sign you need. Everybody say, well, I need a sign. This is it. This is your red. This is your green light. Go. 
This sounds extraordinary, and I'm happy to have you joining the Rare Gem family. So fun, so nutty, so good. I got so much from this time with you today, and I look forward to tuning in, Rachel. Thank you so much, Jade, for this opportunity, for just believing in my purpose, the next step to my extraordinary. This is it for me. This is this is my first step, and I, I want you guys to not only join me, and taking my first step, but allow me to join you. I'm here for you. This is your show. This is about you who are believing and dreaming. I want you to follow me on Twitter. I want you to follow me on Facebook. Feel free to shout me out. Send me emails. Let me know. Take pictures of your first steps. Send me what you're trying to do. Rachel at Rachel Renata, R-E-N-A-T-A dot com. (laughs) <laughs> you are you are wonderful. Go to our public page. It's Rachel Renata on Facebook. Send us five stars. Let us know what you thought of it. Keep it positive. Promote the positive. Find us on Facebook at Rachel Renata. Find us on Twitter at RJ Bramwell. Follow us on Instagram at Rachel Renata 33. It is truly my honor and my pleasure. And of course, you can find Extraordinary on Purpose on the Living Inspiring Network of onerarejim.com. This podcast of Extraordinary on Purpose is presented to you by Rachel Renata and Rare Gym Productions. For more information, visit rachelrenata.com. To connect with Rachel Renata, join the fan page at Rachel Renata on Facebook, follow the Rachel Renata on Twitter, or follow her on Instagram at rachelrenata33. If you would like to advertise your extraordinary business, have questions, or would like to be a guest with Rachel Renata to begin your extraordinary journey on this show, email Rachel at RachelRenata.com. Extraordinary on Purpose is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions, proudly presenting, promoting, and producing positive programs. For more, visit OneRareGem.com. That's O-N-E-R-A-R-E-G-E-M.com. Thanks for listening.